Why is the theory of horse evolution so important to evolutionists? Fossils of horses are their evidence for practically every evolutionary principle. You will see them in museums, you will see them in textbooks, because this they cling to very deeply. Now, what's the history behind the background for horse evolution? In 1841, the earliest horse fossil was discovered. A scientist who unearthed it, Richard Owens, found a complete skull that looked like a fox's head, multiple back teeth and hoofed animals. He called it hierocotherium because it resembled a hyrix, which was a coney. But Richard Owens was the one who coined that term dinosaur, did not believe what he found was a precursor or predecessor of a modern day horse. Later, people tried to link this to the modern day horse and claim it was 70 million years old. In 1879, a fossil expert from America, O.C. March, combined with evolutionist Thomas Huxley, collaborated for a public lecture that Huxley gave in New York. And what Marsh did was he produced a schematic diagram which attempted to show the transition between this small dog-like animal into a modern horse through a series of intermediates. This exhibit was displayed in the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., and eventually the story of the horse family found its way into textbooks, and it's used now as evidence for evolution. And this is the type of drawings that you will see in books. You will see the Hierocotherium, which is called the Dawn Horse, having a number of toes. And they say it evolved into Mesohippus, and then it evolved into Merikippus, evolved into Pleohippus, and finally Equus, which is what we know as the modern horse. Terms like Mesohippus, that means like middle horse, Merikippus, which was supposed to be a cud-chewing horse. By the way, as far as the time scale is concerned, they would have Mesohippus being about 35 million years ago. They have Pleohippus about 10 million years ago. And they would claim about a million years ago, modern horse came on the scene under the name of Equus. There are some real problems that people have found with this theory of horse evolution. First of all, this so-called dawn horse, this creature was not a horse at all, but rather it was like a rock badger or a coney. And to say that evolved into a horse requires some real imagination. So the whole foundation of the horse family based on something that wasn't a horse at all. And then another problem is that they found these bones of the earliest so-called prehistoric ho horses in the same level as modern horse fossils. So how could it have been a predecessor of a modern horse if it was in there at the same time? And another thing that's a problem is that there are actually living horses that have multiple toes. Now most horses we know just have one kind of like a hoof. But there have been fossils that have been found with three toes at the same time and the same place as those with one toe. So there's no one site where the horse series can be seen. In fact, what they've done is they've gathered fragments of bones from various parts of several continents and then merged them together using them to support this assumption. Another thing that's very interesting is the variation of the number of ribs. The rib sequence from this creature up to modern horse varies in the number of ribs from 15 to 19 and then finally settles with the modern horse at 18. Well, that's kind of strange to go up and then down if that's supposed to be an evolutionary pattern. Now, even the size, you can't tell from the size of a horse, you know, if it's a small one, that that has evolved into a larger one. You know, they have these little horses now, as small, Falabella, as small as 17 inches. This is, I think, a Belgian horse, but you've probably seen the Clydesdale horses, the huge horses. So 
you can by selective breeding, just like by selective breeding, they produced Pekingese as well as St. Bernard. Noah took two dogs on the ark. I think Noah took two horses on the ark. And eventually they have bred these little bitty horses. And of course they bred these huge horses like the Belgium and the Clydesdale. But that doesn't trace evolutionary history. So if you find fossil of a little bitty miniature horse, that doesn't show a whole Kind of interesting, in Ecclesiastes, among the many things that Solomon tried, he said horses, great and small. So it appears from that scripture that even Solomon was playing around with breeding little bitty horses and large horses. So the size doesn't prove a thing. When you find a skeleton of a small horse, that doesn't prove it's a predecessor of a large horse. Even some evolutionists admit the problem. Dr. Niles Eldridge, who is curator of the American Museum of Natural History, he's admitted that the exhibit on horse evolution is an imaginary story that is presented as literal truth in textbooks. I'm quoting him. An imaginary story that's been presented as literal truth in textbooks, and he says, now I think that is lamentable. So, some evolutionists have revised their theory. The old theory that the old model that the horse evolved directly in a lineage from the rock badger to the modern day horse. They now have theories that it's a branching bush rather than a straight line. It's interesting that people with an evolutionary bias go to great lengths to try to preserve their theories and to revise them rather than accept the biblical account. Now, how do we as creationists explain the sequence of horse fossils? Well, if you take various bones, small ones, and line them up on one side, large ones on the other, features like three toes to one toe, you line them up, it's a clever arrangement of the fossils and they base it on their evolutionary assumption, how they arrange the fossils. But these fossils have not been proven to be ancestors of the horse, nor have they been proven to be millions of years old. So what's the best evidence for horse evolution? The best evidence is actually the pictures displayed in biology books, and where did they come from? Imaginations of people with an evolutionary bias. So these are just strictly figments of men's imagination.